Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another cast series from the Trash Can League. This week, we're in round number seven, and it's the turn of Herbie Master taking on Risotto. Game number one will be played on Siberia, and we see Herbie spawning to the northwest of the map in the color blue, playing as the French with Risotto, playing as the British spawning to the southeast of the map in the color red. We see both players opening up with a H1 trading post. Uh, if Risotto's gone here straight away, he may just about get the pass. It's very, very close. If uh, Risotto went and uh, crashed right his single treasure on the way, Oh, there we go. He has cracked right a single treasure in the way. He's going to miss that pass, and that's a bit of map knowledge and map awareness. But uh, if Rosado was doing his homework, he would have known that, and he would have uh, got that XP and went back onto that food treasure. But um, it's not the end of the world. Herbie here, because he spawns the northern side. He won't have that issue here, but he will get an early pass XP. But actually, this earliest pass, 71 XP, is um, certainly going to be a little bit more than what he needs for that first shipment. So he's not getting that... Um, an amazing impact from that age one trading post. It's certainly going to speed it along, but um, yeah, if, if, if Rosada got that TP even earlier, it would be so much better. So it looks like Herbie here, before he got that train post, went for the one crack shot on the White Tiger, built the train post, and then came back for the second uh, crack shot here. Maybe Herbie was aware he had time on the trading post to get it down. So um, if that was the case, fair play, good map awareness. Looks like uh, Rosada here. Maybe gone for a second crack shot again, actually, uh, to be fair. He might have actually crack shotted the treasure the first time, ran past, and got uh, 50 damage worth of HP being lost from the Snow Leopard trying to get him as he ran past the treasure. But I think both players here having basically a similar idea. French player here working on 50 coin by two snow monkeys. Um, I assume this is just to get XP. Uh, I don't really want him to walk with the Explorer to pick this up. He really should be pushing out on the map, getting that 75 food treasure, getting his 40 wood. Do see 40 wood on the east side as well. And it's he, you know he has scouted this. He's 80 wood over here plus 75 wood. Uh, maybe I suppose he's heading in this direction anyway. So it's, it's like a might as well get it on the way. But as a French player going age one house trading post, 14 ville age up, no market. The early coin here is not a priority. Don't need any more shipments. And he's actually been this, he's going for the smart decision here of going for the food to try and get the um, age up timing a little bit faster. So um, I, I certainly give uh, props for that decision. Uh, meanwhile, though, let's see where Risotto's at. He's on the eastern side of the map. His scouts in passing will be a bit off due to the, having his one explorer scout this treasure. Well, no, no, scout the treasure, take the trading post, then come back around. But I think he will be rewarded from going to the east side of the map. Um, if I was playing his position, I would have certainly gone this way and found this 40 wood treasure. May have tempted to cross the ice uh, river and scout this side, but uh, on this side he will find 80 wood. And if he scouts a bit further, if he if he does, he may be just waiting for a perfect angle and crack shot. If he sees this other treasure, if he will, oh, Rosado's in a fantastic world. I would have preferred him to go for 80 wood treasure because in this rare situation, actually, Rosado here, I think he's fine with saying to the French player, okay, you have this treasure, I'll have this treasure, and he can kind of use his treasure guidance as, an, as a forward scout to, to find out where the French player's explorer is. But, um, oh, what's Herbie doing down here? I, is he going to go for a second trading post here? Maybe he's getting near, ready to take a second trading post. Crack shot about to come in, thought he would, or just drop down the trading post site. Maybe here Herbie going to go for 2TP church. Naked FF or you know semi FF if you're going for extra wood on those buildings. He does have the market down, place the mines, hunting dogs coming afterwards. Um, so he's got a little bit too much on the food and compared to gold, as in he's got uh, place mines being researched before the hunting dogs there. Not the biggest issue, but he's in little details sometimes uh, helps quite a bit. Oh, he's got moving forward though, so he's not looking for that trading post idea. The quartermaster age up. He's got enough wood to hit it behind for the steel traps. And um, see a lot of French players chopping for the steel trap number instead of waiting for, let's say, maybe 700 wood coming behind or buying one batch of wood at the market and having that 25 kind of spare wood, as in, let's say, uh, a German player would do in some situations. It's be interesting to see, but. Um, Essentially, what I'm saying is I'm surprised Herbie did not go this way for the wood treasure here. Wood treasure 75, 80 woods, 40 wood down here, 40 wood behind his base. I mean, there's a lot of wood treasures on this map. And I think as the French player here, there's a lot of chopping in transition where this explorer 
you know, 330 HP. He certainly could have done a bit better in terms of the treasure gathering and you know, this level of gameplay. I think you, you've you got your age one control in your base sort of. You've got your age one build down to a T. And that's when you start to focus on the scouting. And um, certainly even, I think, again, Rosolo could have pushed in a little bit more. I, he did actually. He did go for this treasure here. So you look at his scouting. did pick up this uh, wood treasure. So he's got 80 food, 80 wood, 40 uh, wood and possibly either a f wood or a food treasure over here so you know both players get some decent opportunities uh one vill going off to the side look at the line of sight of the manners um Rosario here going for a virginia company opening so just have these cheaper manor houses but good line of sight let's look at herbie's point of view it's slightly out of base but in base racks defense 10 musketeer semi possibly going 700 wood now um he's got 100 he's got 100 wood left over already though so what is what is this for this extra wood he's got steel traps going down so he's going to a house that's going to be 50 population but he's not going to be getting anywhere close to 50 pop in edge two i guess the wood there is just to kind of get his infrastructure down because even if he has sent 700 gold now there's no way he gets the food required to age up but um I would love to see a church come down at this moment. So I think church is um, certainly underrated at the moment. They were buffed 0.7 XP per second, but it's continuous as well. So you never have that risk of a over gathering XP from a batch of units or from a, a TV pass. The five musks coming again. A nice raid though. Two. I was about to say it's a two hit kill, but that, that felt like that. There was musketeers there. Oh yeah, no, five musketeers together is. Um, Nearly a one hit kill like, leaves the village to remain like 15 20 HP. So the six musketeer raids is more crucial. Again, this musk will pick off this bill, but you see how close it is to a one shot kill. Yeah, there's only five that actually would be because these guys only do 23 damage, it will be a seven musk. But with a Brit musk attack, it only be, is only six musks in that situation. So looking at Rizzolo's point of view. He hasn't actually got any units out on the board just yet. If, if I was to zoom out even further, I haven't actually got the ludicrous zoom option enabled. I haven't really tried that. I'm not a big fan of it. Might do a li might actually uh, get that implemented uh, for the next game. Well, he trains first batch of longbow here. Really going fast. Um, aged to the next stage. 180 mana pop. Basically no units. I'm going to get two longbows out here at a push. Yeah, queues up another longbow to prepare him for the next batch. So we'll get full batch of longbows afterwards. But um, basically going for... In terms of British standards, it has to be you have to class it as an eco semi FF. It's it's not it's not FF as in maybe five vil seven. Well, yeah, it is really because you're not you're not going to get up to the next stage on just one card, are you, as a British player? So, manor house goes down, more villagers up here exposed. They do have their great coats, but um, the problem with manors all over the place is that your villagers are also all over the place, and um, maybe a consideration to either hide them in the corners or pull them back into your base and the line of sight should help to serve you advance warning of where these units are but um certainly three villagers going down over here a villager went over here that vill went down a villain base went down as well so um risotto with 180 mana pop only at 34 villagers uh, not sending five vill to kind of um bolster that up Compared to Herbie, 25 CDBs, so about, again, 30, 31, 32 uh, villager population. Not far behind, going for that second trading post. A bit delayed, but um, liking the idea there. Does have enough wood left behind, maybe for vet musks? He does have musks basically running around everywhere. And uh, I like I like how the heavy infantry play here versus British is a bit more of an issue to deal with than um, going for like a Hussar raiding because you know Pike, Pikes is an easy counter for Huss but um, running musketeers around either needs you know musketeers to mirror or longbows and um, yeah attack villagers from range and get in get out nice ideas longbows here picking off the musketeers they're going to get pulled back first one musketeer goes down trying to over prioritize the kill in this manor house um, nothing wrong with that if he goes down get the XP but essentially, Herbie is getting into a situation where he wants to send. He's sending skirms, but he must he must research vet musks now. That's that's his priority. And I think he will do so. He hasn't trained anything from the barracks just yet. Actually, has a second barracks so could go back to a batch of. Oh, he's got houses, isn't he? Well, he should have enough coin income here to buy at the market, but maybe. 
well, yeah, because he wants to push in with the Falconets as well. He hasn't got time for 1k woods to kind of roll in behind this, but I'm sure the Vet Musk attack will come in behind. Uh, 38 village behind here, 5 musk with 17 longbows. Vet longbows coming in behind with dragoons being trained now from the stable. Um, British dragoons are just insane. They, they get triple cav uh, benefits, cav HP, cav attack, cav combat. Um, but longbow goons are going to work pretty well. Obviously would re recommend having a couple heavy infantry to block from potential Crassier, but uh, Herbie, go Musketeer, Crassier, Falconets versus the British player here is just going to work so well. I, I think... I think Herbie's one of those, I think Herbie's at that just slightly tier above, but just the knowledge here of going for this composition is going to do very, very well versus a British player. You can just, you can just sense it. Rosado will need the two Falcons to defend. He's going 10 longbows here to kind of pivot in, thinking that Herbie's opening Skirm Goon possibly, or more Skirm uh, Goon, and kind of cease that Musketeer production. These Musks though, still only H2 there from Herbie. Hopefully that's getting um, teched in. It's not quite just yet, and... I'd rather just cancel all these vet skirmishes at this moment in time and focus on that tech. 20% attack and HP is too good. Crassier, 3, going for a raid. Um, scout here, and seeing that. Going to get revealed by the buildings, the town centre, and actually fighting. Longbow's moving to defend, but it's more of the Dragoons will move in quite quickly. And yes, yeah, more villagers going down. Herbie, 27 villagers. Rosado up to 46 now. So he went 8 vil. Okay, he's got 8 vil. He's got the... Um, Trading post still um, gathering XP. He's actually you know, getting some big batches of units, creating that XP, getting some unit kills as well. Feel like Rosado, yeah, going for that eight vil as a pivot shipment really early on. I'm not too sure that's it's 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 certainly greedy. I think he's kind of felt pressures into doing it because he lost so many as it is, and that's this is the timing where there's you know two Falks coming behind, but um. Massive Vet Longbow defense. Has timing on the two Falconets because Herbie's the aggressive player here. He needs to send his Falconets across the map. Um, oh, Rosado will see, will see the Crassiers from the line of sight, and that should be dead Crassiers. Like that, for me, this is got to be. You've got to pick these off. This is um, no excuses to leave these ones alive now, especially because he's a heavy, heavy cavalry. 6.25 speed compared to 7.25. Pull back on the Longbows, maybe. Um, just focus on the Crassiers because this is a lot of resources to go down. Yes, they all go down. Well done on that front. Two Falconets come in behind. Wait for your Falconet shipment. You know what's coming behind. Oh, two going down. Three on the bounce shots as well. Stagger mode coming behind. Uh, but when you have this many units, actually, stagger mode doesn't actually quite work as well compared to low batches. So losing just four longbows for the poke doesn't really protect the mana house, but allows him to go for another mana house elsewhere if he wants to do so at a later point. Uh, 40 wooden base still standing. I find curious how that treasure's still here. Western side, Manor House has seen all these villagers. That's a potential raiding spot for the British player later on, but he needs to defend his base first. So he does, does, definitely needs to get the Falconets out, get them straight into fire mode, and even maybe get them focusing on the skirms from range. Um, both Falconets will be very cautious of trying to engage each other. Bit of a big raid there on the settlers. Yeah, so get unpack them now. Do not do not go too too close. And yeah, that's... Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 Risotto. Oh, that's a, that's a game-deciding move there, unfortunately. Do not unpack Falconets in range of another Falconet. You've got to unpack pack them first and then move them into position at a later point under the safety of your Longbow's covering. But um, Longbow's here going to get some decent trades versus the skirmishers, so it's not all too bad here. He does have 32. Got to go for the flank with the Dragoons and the over... Ah, he's overpricing the Falconets. This is a... This is a Classic risk. I know he needs to do this because he's down uh, two to one, but like, just imagine if he could just keep that Falconet on the range, focusing down the, the skirms. Longbow's working there. Magic versus Colonial Musketeers. That Falconet wasn't pressuring the Longbow Mass just yet, and you could still have those uh, 15 Dragoons here with another batch of Dragoons here, just, just chilling, thinning out the Skirm Musketeer before committing afterwards. And that was an expensive trade there for Risotto. He's moving in. I think he's trying to focus on the Falconet now with his longbows, which he can do. 22 range. Falconet on less than 100 HP. Minutemen being called first, which is fine. They're tanking. But that should be in range, and that should be going down. That's a quad kill on a single Falcon shot. It's huge. It's a great, great, great shot. A couple of muskets moving forward now. Uh, no, there's no village in the town centre focusing down the Falconet. That's why it's still standing all this time. Um, outpost here. Um, the town centre has a negative multiplier versus artillery. I think that's recently introduced, maybe, so it's a little bit worse in terms of that. But uh, 
After all said and done, I feel that Herbie is in the driving position. 10 wheels idle, 48 wheels behind here. Herbie had to 32. So the Brit player is still in decent eco, and the five Huff shipment here from Risotto may even be a, a case where he might actually want to send it on the map to raid. He knows where so many uh, French CDBs are. He's got another build up here, scouting as well. Dragoons charging headfirst into Skirm, mass um, expensive. You know. Uh, French player here may continue that Crassier switch, and you've got to keep them covered. Um, yeah, tough one chasing with longbows. I think it's just just trying to chase an army. As soon as the army stops, the dragoons running onto them, just instantly all in range of every single infantry there, and that's a a, a quality exchange there for Herbie. Herbie may be considering sending in team range infantry attack to buff the musketeers, skirmishers. These guys still colonial. Um, would have got so much value when we attacked in to vet musk all that time ago. With this many coin miners, there may be a potential here for the British player to go into an artillery foundry. Uh, just kind of help him with the skirm mass. I think that's still mass longbow's fine. He's got all his trees, so kind of longbow pike still can work. He's getting a market now. I assume he's gonna go for log flume. I think if you lost your market early on, you probably haven't reached such that second tier. Um, would top chop in tech, so it might be a good opportunity to do so. It's the ride with him. Uh, villagers 0.55, 0. place mine, gang saw. Probably has steel traps as well. I assume he's got steel traps. I don't really see any food villagers. Are they on berries? Yeah, he's got an artillery foundry because he's got he's not got any villagers on the. Uh, on the food and this potential for a huge raid with these sculptures if they moved on a bit further, but he's backed off a little bit. He's just waiting for that Crassier time, I think. 15 Dragoons. Oh, he trained a batch of Dragoons there instead of Crassiers. Okay, still got still got Skirm Goon. Musk's going for another little prod down to the side, villagers moving across. This Rosola here is not going to be sending Musk combat could go cav combat but it probably will be sending 1k gold he's got enough goals it is um just yeah trying to get his massive mass of falconets herbie if he does over push in on the falconets maybe at risk but i feel if he kind of keeps his presence map control it'd be a little bit fine yeah, it's interesting actually i think the falconets here is just such a good play from risotto just i'm the four Falconets here at five. He's got a full batch of five. Couple heavy infantry to protect. Enough longbows to do some good damage on Dragoons. Falconets are no bad as well. And he sees this unpack. This he's going to unpack all of them. They're really close together. But he should get some decent volleys there. Only the three is a little bit underwhelming from his point of view. But sometimes that's just a bit of the kind of RNG working its magic at that moment. There's still no Carassiers from Herbie. I, I feel that you need Carassiers in this situation, otherwise there's nothing to really challenge Longbows. You know that Longbows will win the Skirm War, especially if you've not teched your skirmishes into ranged infantry attack. Um, oh, there's the Carassiers. There's five. Oh, where's... Oh, no. Get in, get in, get in. Oh, the villagers, the CDB pulled perfect. Oh, my... Oh, <laughs> oh I'm bringing back it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sigh. Sigh, sigh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, un it's unfortunate. Um, I, let, let's let's spin it on its head. Let's say Herbie. Um, yeah, nice push with there with the Cav Combat Vet Crassiers. Um, having Musk Scums group together. The CDB pool as well is very smart. Knowing that there's artillery in the field. And that these CDBs can take three Falconet shots before going down. They don't suffer from any multipliers that the Falconets have. Um, also, you know, longbows and Falconets chasing out across. They're not good units pushing because they can't kite great. Falcons, if they push, they need to fire, then unpack, unpack, move forward, unpack, fire, pack, move forward. Um, you say that the game was over six before, before that? I didn't feel so. It was, it was pretty decent. And um, I think Brits, one of those game saves, if longer they go on, that they actually are, are fine in that situation. But yes, you did lose quite a few vills in places. And that early Dragoon commit on the Falconets was possibly a bit premature. Um, it's one of those, if you can 
keep the Falcon that's busy on manor houses and even a tower centre. You've got the tower here for shipment point as well. So the actual tower centre is not a crucial building here for the British player in the Third Age. Longbows could work their magic and outrange the skirms and take great trades before forcing the that defensive engagement specifically. But um Yeah, as we do, we definitely gotta go into that Ville timeline and uh scrutinize everything and oh look at that. It's just um thirty four couple more one Ville being trained, a couple manners coming down, age ups in Q, 37 down to 34. Uh, to be fair, only losing three Vills into the Musk Raids there. I thought it was a little bit more, but he lost plenty more after the age up came in behind, having the eight Vills to kind of bounce back into the um, progression from there. But uh, it's not too bad. Obviously, you would like to see it a little bit higher, but the economies were pretty close, possibly still Brit favoured, but I guess the quality of the French troops there were um, still good. Better, yes. Look at even the, even the economy does suggest for Max a little bit ahead in that situation. And um, this this is the six that's there is the Falconet drop in from Herbie, and this is the Dragoons going down as well as the kind of ongoing skirm longbow trade and going down from 68 down to 46 when these reinforcements were coming just behind as well. This was a yeah, a big batch of um. Dragoons and a batch of longbows. I remember that. That's that's just one of those held on a little bit longer there being fine. That the, the colonial musk there from Herbie questionable. The lack of church from him as well. Because if you go to Fortress Age, you know you really want that shipment progression behind this, and that would really uh, help both players along. Yeah, once the fight started happening for Herbie, the shipments were coming in, but so you're trading in that strength or your army for more reinforcements from the shipments. But um yeah, no, again. Have a good game. We move on to game number two, and let me give Herbie his well earned 1 0. We check the Discord, someone's pinged me a message. Ah, oh, it's the semi FF gang. Oh, yeah, semi FF gang. Um, Hurry, asking 15 minutes ago, what do I pick against Dutch in Punjab? Um, ooh, I think French is fine. French, Brit, not Jer, not Jer Defo. Um, India can. Uh, Japan, maybe, maybe, maybe not Japan. Spain definitely wants Spain. Spain's a good. Spain's always good versus um, Dutch. Always want. Yo, why have you? <laughs> Thirteen messages deleted by moderator. Every time ban the crab guy. Come on, why? What? What? What did he? What did he say? Oh, did he... oh no, crab. You you can't you can't chat shit about players. That that's a rule. But um, let's play. Let's place him into the timeout zone and let let him come back as a better man. Do 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 Oh, whatever. <clears throat> God, I've come back as a better man. I was trying to time it out for just the two minutes, but the only thing here is uh, the uh, ten minutes. So someone, someone on time about in like five minutes time. I don't know. I I, I was, didn't read the full conversation because as soon as the ban order came in, because I'm on the uh, Twitch. No, I'm on the OBS. Um, chat doc. I actually can't see the previous messages. I need to go into the actual Twitch website and moderate view to see what previous ones. I can't really comment on what was said, but um... yeah, you just block him. Yeah, like, that's 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 the thing. If, if that's if if you two doing it on, it's fine. But um, you know, crowd's got better in recent months. Let's put it that way, and I hope to see that trend continue. Right, game number two: Herbie versus. 
It's risotto. Why why have I had all this time being passy? What on earth is going on? It's not this sh get this man out of here. Not him, definitely not. Low. <laughs> oh what a what a blunder that is. It's uh Herbie Herbie Risotto. A chance I'll be looking back at a later point, but like I mean, I'd, be, I'd pretty confuse myself. Okay, so we're on uh, Great Plains game number two. We see Herbie spawning to the northeastern map in the kind of blue. Herbie won the last game, so he's chosen to play to pick his civilization first on Great Plains. He's gone for the British civilization. Risotto here with the counter pick has decided to counter as the United States. Not quite certain the United States is a good counter to the British on the Great Plains map with High Hunt, but I'm sure Risotto has got a big plan in in him, so we'll watch with excitement to see how Risotto plays this. Uh, good afternoon, Breeze, as well. Uh, Gare's going back to work, so I'll see you later. Make sure you check the VODs out, and I'll probably stream tonight as well, so I hope you can join in there. But yeah, Herbie gets an 80 wood. A lot of coin interest on this map. He's taken my advice of open up market on a map with high, high amount of beaver treasures. Look, another beaver treasure out here. Doesn't quite see it, but another 50 coin available for him at this moment in time is certainly quite huge. I uh, did have that treasure for hunting dog, so he's got hunting dog eco pretty quickly. Another 50 coin here. And um, nearly with this beaver treasure as well and a little bit of mining will get himself up to another house if he buys at the market. Risotto here, kiting this 70 XP treasure, um, protecting his HP from a coyote. Should be able to just about get this, it's going to be close. I don't think Herbie's uh, quite realised what the situation was, and he's only now going for the treasure. And I think he's realised actually, just if he went more of a dark line, he could have get that, but he probably didn't anticipate it. Probably working on the age one herd in here, these annoying bisons. Um, good opportunity now for Herbie to go and start herding in, especially when you know that your age one macro has been pretty good so far you can afford that extra villager seconds of being lost to start the herding but the actual overall villager seconds gained from the herding as a result of you know good herding in age two is certainly really really good oh breeze i it's i i've untimed him i've timed him out but i, I he's not banned he's i, I don't want to see him banned i don't know why result is banned and yeah i think you're absolutely fine that's a personal issue between those two people instead of um specifically community rules on my channel being broken there but um i'm kind of in the middle of the casting as well if you uh, excuse me on that one herbie aging up here 16 villagers here we'll get the gang sword in transition really early as well that's be a nice thing for um herb to go for could even be a thing but he's now that he's known this um macro specifically he could get gang sword super early in age one and have it fully researched before he clicks up so you might trade off two seconds or three seconds on the age up time but having an extra 10 percent on wood chopping at this moment in time now throughout the time that gang was being uh, researched could actually allow him to squeeze out that one mana early and kind of get that um shipment progression pushing through a bit faster here herbie though does see this uh 110 food treasure uh, obviously didn't see it as he went his explorer around the northern side, but now he sees it so the villagers can be quite nice. Crack shots onto the coyote, working through the other coyotes as well. And the start from our British player here has been certainly more than adequate, and I think Herbie's very happy. Scouting defensive bison as well, while trying to herd in the front two bison's hunt, is also a smart move. It allows him a late source of um, income, food income at a later point, in a very safe position as well. Let's have a look at the United States player. Three CDB. Thirst card here from Rosado. He's got a deck saying, don't boom on me. Suggesting, suggesting maybe an H2. Well, I was about to say H2 focus. He's only got the six cards. But then again, sometimes with sometimes great decks will push your opponent into thinking you're doing some other strategy. But actually, you surprise them with the H2. We've got the three villes, the Spanish immigrants, also Irish immigrants as a maybe a tactical six villager shipment in the second age. Maybe sends that in at like five minutes and 20 seconds so that he does get the six villes on at the six uh, minutes timing, I believe. Oh no, it's every um, five. I got that card completely wrong. It's just, no, it's just five. It's just four villes at five minutes, isn't it? And no other until like you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes so maybe he might delay it a little bit into the 10 minute mark but i don't quite see that happening uh, he's aged up with um the virginia states forward racks forward outpost as well at uh, racks is um being 
Okay, the outpost is going down with the Spash immigrant shipment, it looks like. Yes, outpost wagon. Rax is going down with the age up. Virginia coming behind is... Allows him to go to the next age pretty quick if he does choose so, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's um, looking to do that. And maybe another state could uh, help his situation here a little bit more. Ford Rack, 700 wood, look, looking to get that state militia spam uh, starting to happen. Mid-map control is very nice, especially in between double 320 XP treasures. Players should be aware that in the middle of the map, there are some tier 3 treasures, usually the 320 XP or the 210 guarded by three bandit rifles so you know there's opportunities there for the united states player to, to be swimming in xp certainly spanish immigrants here works well the um 1.7 xp trickle rate is insane that is the same amount of xp income as a single tp and a single church together so certainly an insane card spanish immigrants i i would argue that it's possibly too strong for what it is but um out come the turkio pikeman uh, I know he's going. I know he's going Pike State Militia, but the Pikes here don't really offer you anything. You know the Brick player is, you know, massing houses. Won't be population caps. Just extra, reg just regular minute rifle Minutemen could do pretty well versus, you know, longbow, longbow musk. It's just enough decent damage there to, to do versus anything coming in. And hopefully, with enough units. Uh, the British player will be very tentative to call in any cavalry anyway. But, um, yeah, Pikes are just protecting himself from cavalry. Trying to siege man houses. Trying to get the XP, I think, is the kind of main call there. He's trying to get the XP income from the manor house kills to kind of find him along. But you should probably should be thinking about this, these bandit riders. But these guys, they don't have their cavalry tags. It's actually a bit of a nightmare to take down. He may want to... Um, have the outpost tanking the damage first before moving in with the units afterwards. Five state militia moving in on just the longbows on its own. That's going to be a longbow trade, I think. Longbows are going to do very, very well, but now more state militia coming in. And Herbie, full longbow defense. A very forward stable here. Very, um, I would not recommend that from Herbie. We're trying to hide any cav switches the best as you can here. And the, um, that manor house got repaired, so these, these Turkey are still working their magic. And longbows here have an absolute field day, it seems. Is that a radium base? I saw, saw something um, flashing on the moon. It's still flashing. I've got no idea what's flashing there. Maybe, I don't know. A bit of a weird one. Okay, now now we're starting to got a decent mass of um, state militia. I think he just sent the eight state militia and trained another batch of five. Those husks should soon be on the field here from Herbie. It's actually, oh, it's actually a long way away. I've been trading longbows. They can't They can't retreat. I think Herbie's absolutely fine to stand and fight. He knows that he's significantly outsped by these units. He's just going to stand and try and fight. Faster rate of fire as well. Minutemen coming to reinforce. And um, the pikemen have finally gone through that first house. Uh, rifle militia here would have certainly cl cleaned up those longbows a lot faster and could have given uh, result of that momentum to push in a little bit deeper. Uh, welcome to Zerimbia in the chat as well. I did see a message a while back, but I um, was waiting for a nice time to say it. And yes, certainly welcome to the stream. Welcome to the casts. Hope you've been here many times before. It's not your first time, but if it is, it's also good if that's the case as well. Okay, working on the 320 XP treasure now for result is actually really nice. He's only so close to another shipment, so this should be two shipments back to back. He's starting to run out of shipments here, so he's going to be probably Springfield Arsenal, Springfield Armory into Irish immigrants, I would imagine, because that's going to be your six villagers for the 10 minute mark, I think. Yes, that's going to be 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, that's going to be a six mil shipment in the next shipment time. So maybe Rizal is looking for that time in as well. It's going to work quite well. Another batch of pikes here. He's probably seen that stable. I'm not too sure how he even got a batch out of Cav just yet. Maybe Cav was trying to be raiding. Yeah, he's just trying to be raiding with the Hussars. So now that he's got a double batch of pikes and the Hussars are on the field, the pike are only now starting to really be annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, Turkey pikemen only are only colonial pikes with a little bit of extra stats on them. Um, they they look like they're guard unit counterparts, but they are only you know, colonial pikes. There's the Huss, straight onto the state militia here. Pikes are a little bit out of position, that's a good catch. At least a snare, and if the state militia try and return fire, they're going to focus down on the Hussar units, and longbows are going to get some nice volleys off, not really being targeted. Pikes starting to move forward as well, but um, 
and the stun run back. I think uh, Herbie missed a volley there onto some squishy pikes, not in cover mode. But um, yeah, Herbie defending the position very, very well. So much hunt by his base, leaving at back defensive hunts uh, for the time being. Um, 700 coin being sent behind. Looking for a second stable here from Herbie. I really think a second stable here uh, on the 700 coin could be quite strong. He's going for another two mana houses to grow that eco behind. But he's, I think maybe a second racks or a second stable. But a third production is probably what he wants. I'm not too sure Herbie's looking for the age at any point. But he just feels that like he's got he's nearly on the event on the position of crushing the United States H2 armor. Just hasn't quite got the mass for it. Hmm. Normally, I'd say I like villagers. Like players gathering coin with like four or five bills, but he's actually trained Hussar Longbow, so Longbowman, so he can't actually spend that coin as fast as it gathered. So he's basically maximizing his villagers' income on the food and wood, and kind of minimizing what he needs on coin for that to happen. So, um, yeah, it's not really disrupting his eco too much. He could probably peel off a few more uh, bills here onto the food line. Hussar's chasing. There's the five regulars from the shipment. Was that a shipment there from Rosada? I think he just, no, he just trained the, the regulars there. Does have Springfield Armory, but a uh, single armory would take a long time to research through all those texts. And yes, the pikemen are, are, are retreating. There's just too many hussars for the pike minutes to deal with at the moment. And Longbow's doing very well at picking off heavy infantry. I feel Herbie here is actually uh, microing this very well. He's trying to find those um, pikemen to target the longbows. And once the anti cavalry goes down, the cavalry are going to reign supreme here. Um, looking for a cavalry upgrade here from Herbie soon. He sent six longbows at his next card. Uh, could have gone for. Cav HP, but six longbows to reinforce for the longbow husk push out. It's working very well. Anti Cav here from Rosado, critically low for the time being. I think Herbie is in a fantastic position. There's another Pike Minutemen uh, from the outpost. And um, path around the barracks. Obviously, you're not going to delete the barracks. It's the only pro production, but um, two will go down. A couple Turkios and regulars do actually great exchange on the Hussars, though. So that has actually worked out really well in Herbie's favor. Herbie could have pulled that on back, but I think he's just kind of confident that his. Large mass of longbows is just going to clean up whatever is remaining, and there's a new there's another batch of hussars moving in for the snare. And that's what the hussars are already doing. They're just keeping those statements of pins so the longbows can rain fire from behind the GG cords. And Herbie takes game number two. Let's uh, look at the post game here. Not really much for me to um, comment on, I, I think. It's just, it's just a really well executed. A defense there from Herbie. I think once he realized um, the United States player was full H2 mode, um, kind of adapted well, prioritized the unit production, got some decent trades. Uh, I'm surprised the in this moment of time how it looked like Herbie, it looked like Rizzolo basically closed down Herbie's longbows to the point that if Herbie tried to pull back those um, longbowmen, they would lose because they can't fire and kite, and also that they. Um, yeah, they can't outrun a state militia, so they can't have to stand and fight. And up, up close with longbows having low HP, yeah, uh, decent engagement there. But it's the Minutemen reinforcements, it looks like, from this position. Was it the 6, 15 up to 20, 20? Maybe this is a batch of uh, five longbows and Minutemen was 15 to before. But um, yeah, in, in the end, it looked it looked like a good position for Rosolo. But uh, Herbie probably surviving that little uh, push, but then getting like, some cavalry out and holding back in. The snare on units was very, very strong behind this, and yeah, just, just, just grew. The shipment progression there from the United States was insane. Just the once the XP comes in from one of the treasures is very that's a seventy XP treasure. But as soon as as soon as Spain, the Spanish cars coming, you can just see a just a a very strong increase of XP income, and this just leads to shipment spam behind it. Maybe we could, maybe Springfield Armory could have come in a lot earlier, and that could have been a way to kind of get that um, tempo moving. Because if you had then, was it like 5.2 speed state militia, that could have certainly maneuvered and, and always timed those upgrades to take, take in. And it would have worked out really, really well. Um, I I really like the rifle minutes here for the United States. They're, they're veteran musks, they're 100 HP after you know, unit decay, and. Um, yeah, the really early, the really early pike minutes just didn't have that desired effect that it was hoping for. I think. 
Right, uh, good game. We'll move on to game number three of this Play All Three series. Crab got saying that he wishes that the the British civilization could do some nerfs. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. I, I feel that the British civ needs some nerfs. Um, either mana cost in 140 wood or slowing down the, the buildings or those um, the building speed of mana houses. I think would uh, certainly be a nice positive change for the British civ. Brits feeling exceptionally strong in this current matter. No, Joe, Brit is not balanced. Brit, no, I'm not having this um, propaganda from you guys. Everybody knows that the British is an S tier Civ, and um, I've always been on the strong opinion that uh, Civs should be balanced around A tier Civs, not S tier Civs. I think there's a, a time where uh, the, the, the guy who's doing the balancing work for Age Empires 3 suggested that the British are like, are like the gold standard. Of civilizations, we want to try and balance everything towards that, and I'm a bit concerned that some of the changes to Inca, Aztec in this next coming patch will push those civs to the S tier uh, ranks instead of kind of pushing them towards that E tier. I, I think Brits are in good place, but minor adjustments to try and scale back the basically the manor house side of it of their game. Part of everything else though is absolutely fine there from Brits. Just just a little little minor change there. Yeah, I can take some Dutch nodes. Um, yeah, Crab got. I'll, I'll send you a message later on, but uh, I'm kind of busy right now. And if I forget, don't don't blame me. I've got other stuff going on tonight. Today, uh, right? Japan mirror on Flora, so we do see Herbie spawns to the northeast of the map. This is interesting. Herbie's decided to play as the Japanese on Florida. He's got the first pick. He knows the map is Florida. That's the map that Rosado's picked. Um, but Rosado counter picking by also agreeing to a Japanese mirror. So. I think if Herbie's playing this, he sees his opponent's going for the Japan mirror. He must be a bit concerned that he that Rosado must have a plan for this, or Rosado's a bit experienced in this kind of uh, Japan mirror playstyle. It's not often that you have the opportunity to counter pick if you go for the mirror, but um, I like I like the tenacity that Rosado's shown here by saying, actually, I'm I don't need a civ advantage here. I'm just going to beat you one versus one uh, with my um, better Japan execution. Rosado scouts and a stray dog. Both players, this looking base. We do see market starts for both players because it's Florida. But Rosado's point of view here, 30 shrine. Looks like he's gone for a double shrine. There's one shrine mid-map here. Where's the other shrine gone? Shrine over here. Uh, has Herbie seen it? It'd be quite hard for him to scout. He does see... Like, he could possibly work out. But to be fair, you've got to be a god to notice these turkeys are um, penned up in the fog of war like that behind the trees. It's not... Can't necessarily see the orientation of the turkeys there. We can't see the other um, shrine, and he's got no vision on the potential in base. Whereas Herbie has gone for the Portuguese consular in base shrine on the starting hunt, but I think he wants to try and put Tushoga shrine here to capture these deers and these six sheep as well. So, certainly a good opening here from Herbie. Oh, I hit the wrong key. Pardon me, pardon me. I just hit this play fast instead of the. Um, uh, I take off the fog of war, but uh, just more Asia one shenanigans. Nothing too big there. <laughs> Lionheart saying 135 wood for free veal, 10 pop build XP and map hack. That's <laughs> it is OP. I, I I don't get when people say that Brits are not OP when they really are. It's just. It just is. It's 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 also like you you can go for like a villager boom build and it's gonna be very well. Or just later in the game when you build a manor house, like even the fourth page, it's, it's like oh wow, I've just got a villager for free. Isn't this amazing? And it just it's just so strong. And um, you know, for, comparing to other sieves in terms of booms, you know, the Brit boom. If you leave if you leave Brit alone, the strongest economic um, early game that there is. And it's sometimes if you feel like if yeah, you know, sieve has strong eco you can kind of balance that with a poor military but brit military is also very very strong in its own right it has some challenges but overall it's still very very solid in that situation and um yeah it's um i i would i would push for a slight 
It, the Brit Manor House is well, 140 wood, but it got reverted back to 135 for some reason. I don't really know what's up with that, but it doesn't necessarily matter. <laughs> Breeze on the uh, port, on the Hazard Kaiser, dictating the balance nurture uh, agenda here. Um, yeah, we haven't seen much Portuguese, have we? That is. That is a, a fair comment to make, and I think most people can acknowledge that the Portuguese um, are not in the S tier rank, and they don't feel to be they don't feel to be in the A tier rank as well, possibly uh, mid to high B. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to play Portuguese versus the British on land map, it's just chalk and cheese. Not even possible. I, I, I think it's that much of a difference between the two serves. Contention here of 100 food, and it looks like Herbie's got a straight for it, just really on top of that treasure contention. And <laughs> Rosado's just double poofed out there. He's had enough. He wants to go back, but he's probably focusing on his own stuff. So, um, looks like here Herbie's gone for age one heavenly cami. Three fishing boats here for uh, Rosado. Herbie onto four shrines, building another shrine to Shogo, being rotated. Nice building wall here from Herbie Master. And uh, Rosado here, 60 Shrine Pop as well, but he's got Tory Gate, so he's on Fire Shrines. Rosado's got more Shrines than Herbie for the time being. And um, yeah, maybe Heavenly Kami these days is just not what you do, especially on the water map for the you know potential of the three fishing boats there as a um, option. Soon though, there will be the opportunity for the Herbie Master to go for the Portuguese fishing float fleet for three fishing boats on the water. That will help his eco out. And uh, both players here just kind of getting their eco going together. But with Rosado going for his um, Tory Gates build, I've seen him do on stream quite a bit recently. Um, also, you know, sieging with the Samurai is, is, is very heads up here to Herbie, what's coming on. And I suppose, you know, you might as well make good use of the Samurai. Okay, Herbie has scouted the Tory Gates, so he kind of knows it, so this is absolutely fine. I'm looking for a bit more military units here from Rosado. It seems taking his time to get this uh, production gun. Only five Ashy there. Consulate coming down uh, only about now. Building with three Vils. Market behind getting his market techs. So it's, it's probably you know, a fine time. Divide Strike there working 80 wood. That's a nice treasure. He's gone 600 wood first, it seems. 600 wood, 300 export, and then probably into um, Ashy shipments. I see that he does like the Daimyo early as well, so that must be a possibility, but we do see Irizola here with all this wood still ready to be spent and is looking to try and get, I guess, more shrines down. Maybe Japan Tory Gates build might not need the 600 wood shipment here, still floating those resources. Now sending in Daimyo support behind. Well, meanwhile, Herbie, uh, one wall's coming down, lost a couple ashes in the middle, double racks defense coming behind. He's also gone for 600 wood, probably into the four villagers as second card. No export in his deck, but does have double Ashi Yumi cards with their upgrades in age 2 as well. Does anybody know when the patch will be released? Uh, no, I I, I assume next Tuesday. I, I assume they, they're still going to do the Tuesday patches, and it's going to be the second week of the month, so it kind of follows that pattern, but uh, you know, doesn't, that's not solid. I'm going to try and find out if I can get extra information on that. Um, but the, the public preview patch is basically done anyway. It's all the uh, all the patch notes are there. There's a few other changes as well. Um, so it's basically ready to go. Uh, I think I just wanted to see early team and issues with play testing it before they release it. But it's just it's just common practice for them to kind of release a preview patch and then drop it about two weeks later. But yes, yeah, so it's going to be the Incan patch, and I it's it's it's, it's a tough one because. All the tournaments will be forced onto that new patch, but um, it's unfortunate to have a change in balance patch and such a, such a huge change of a sieve during a tournament patch as well is also certainly um, not what anybody really wishes for, so I'm not too sure how um, any rules with Inca will be affected moving forward. Um, early suggestions is that Inca is on the busted scale, so maybe a ban on that situation until it gets figured out. I don't really think anybody here in this... Um, championship for the TCL even plays Inca apart from Fitz, so maybe Fitz is thinking, no, why couldn't this patch come out like a month ago? So, <laughs> here's, we, may, we may get to see Fitz finally win a game with the Incans. He's uh, continuously said that he's always lost his Incan games, but that'd be a bit of a fun. 
Daimyo support here. Full Ashi from Rosolo and going to uh, Shinobi no Monos from the export. No club and being trained whatsoever. But on a you know Japan mirror, there are shrines to be sieged. Clubman, they can do an excellent job sieging. Shinobis don't have a bad siege attack as well. 23 siege is certainly not to be uh, sniffed at. But it's the extra range resist, 165 HP there. You know, slightly tankier than Ashis, but also do a decent job. Slightly extra range as well. You know, they, they have their um, uses in the army being an offensive unit in this matchup. Defensive. Uh, town center fire would be nice. He's got a couple um, Ashes firing defensively. Minutemen to be called. Looking at Herbie's point of view, he does have the Portuguese fishing fleet, so he hasn't got the export required to send in the consulate Bessieros. Uh, he hasn't got the fridge export as well, so he can't really send that and then go into the is it six crossbows or seven crossbows. Um, he sent a five Yumi Archer shipment one time. He's sending it now, and I think Yumi Archers here will work quite well versus what Rosal's going, but you know once these once the Japan players mass in Ashi, well, Ashi on their own are good. They're not great, they're good. Needs a heavy cavalry presence to really make them effective. So I think I think Herbie is going to get, um, is aware that he needs to think about preparing to deal with the stable, which is just coming up now from Rosado, probably from the military wagon. Rickshaw, yeah, from the Japan consulate as well. So Rosado making good use of the Japanese consulate. Yumi Archer standing firing. This is good. This is going to be town center fire. As, as Herbie got his villagers elsewhere. I think, yeah, he's got them all on this back. Cherry Orchard, uh, food's running a bit low. Uh, Daimyo got into a very interesting position here, but the Yumi Archers are turning their fire. He needs to focus Yumi Archers on Ashi, maybe get the Ashi across. Still no town center fire. Where the Minutemen here from Herbie as well. It's just the army's actually falling apart. Less than 20 units, but Rosado here, massive amounts of uh, forces. 25 Ashi plus double Explorer and Shinobi no Monos. Explorers here really needs to poof back just to tank, but I think that timing has been and gone. Town center now offering support. Not too sure Minutemen being sec uh, secured already. Does have five Ashi in queue. Doesn't have the gold required for a Minutemen pop. And because Minutemen now, well, they're out of. They need to move across. It feels a little bit awkward there. Ashi's ch charging down Yumi's. Rosado here, five Ashi, five Yumi coming in. Herbie's point of view, um, five Yumi. No units in trains. And uh, one view comes out to the uh, disappointment of all the Ashi's waiting for him. And yeah, Herbie's population has plummeted off a cliff. And um, is in big trouble here, real big trouble. Yumi's coming from... <laughs> Where have these Yumi's come from from Rosado? They kind of like ran around the back of the map here. What's going on here? The more Ashes have come down. And um, the Daimyo is still working. Oh, maybe it was Daimyo training and receiving the shipments. Yes. Big brain plays here from Rosado. Daimyo has eventually gone down, but that has been such a huge buff to Rosado's army and really has put that under pressure. Maybe... Herbie was a bit late on the Japan consulate switch, so maybe the strength of the units here for um, kind of um, from Rosado is just significantly stronger than Herbie. And yeah, Rosado's just chasing Herbie. Herbie has to run around. The only thing he can do is run. Okay, Minutemen have been called at the four rifles, but um, a bit of an awkward timing, bits not with anything else, not really getting the kind of impetus that it needed with that Minutemen pop. All the villagers. Are oh, still build up. The two explorers do come back in, but again, this range resist all this extra HP could have been so useful earlier on with that Minutemen pop as well, but just didn't quite happen. And I think it's gonna be a little bit of too little, too late here with um, Rosado's, not Rosado, with Herbie's defensive play. Just this map is a bit of a problem for Japan players as well. It's the, the trading line; you can't wall it. The best that Herbie could do is wall here and here, but he might not be able to fit a wall in between the cherry orchard and the line here. It's a bit close, so it's um something that Japan players will need to consider is trying to make sure that they do have a way to wall down to the side of the trading line because although having this wall structure is very, very nice, this is just open as and uh, units are streaming in, villagers moving out to try and tank and punch. And uh, when you're in this situation, just trying to um, vill micro, you probably feel you're in a pretty... Uh, struggling position here. Herbie sending five Ashi is 29 Vils. Most of them are out and about somewhere. He said it says six idle, but it's plenty more than six idle Vils at the moment. And yeah, that's going to be um, basically tough. Just losing these villagers in the mirror. Well, Rosado sending four Vil. All his villagers are gathering. 37 Vils, more shrines. Nagi production starting, and yeah, that's just going to be brutal. I think Herbie, yeah, he just he's just just rallying them to the shrine, just saying, if you're going to kill these, please kill them gracefully in front of the shrine. 
And um, yeah, final game, Rosado picking up a point, avoiding the whitewash. And honestly, taking a game off um, Kirby here is a, is a real nice situation. Uh, Herbie, you know, one of the tournament favourites here, is potentially trying to get that 3 0 he wanted to, but uh, Rosado taking the game and uh, Rosado taking the game off both Herbie and Passy, uh, just really just keeping his race to the top two neck and neck. And uh, Rosado certainly pushing a good performance there uh, from himself as well. Interesting ideas was the United States game going for H2 instead of trying to kind of go for that kind of bot, Botto FI into, um, you know, defensive. Four or five town centers to produce some Vills, forts, play, and, and that kind of uh, magic. Going for kind of an age two play, counter picking Brits, and obviously, um, you know, game one, the, the French British game. Although Rizal said he was out the game about within six minutes into the game or before the end, um, certainly looked competitive throughout the entire thing. Just got to be unlucky there with that final fight, the Falconets, Longbows, and versus the Crassier CDB. So, um, yeah, that's going to be the end of this series. Another good one as always. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't know when it's be uploaded. Probably a long time in the future. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Um, yeah, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button. But make sure you, you follow the Trash Can League playlist. That's where all the rounds, all the series, all the casts, all the players, you'll find all that good stuff there. Go check it out and enjoy the content. And I'll see you guys later.